the sympathetic nervous system is part of the autonomic nervous system, which includes the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. And um, um, this is in contrast to the somatic nervous system. So first of all, I will try to deal with the somatic uh, nervous system and then um, to compare uh, it to the uh, sympathetic nervous system. Um, let's draw um, a section in the spinal cord and within the spinal cord there is the gray matter with a posterior horn, anterior horn, that's the central canal. Now, attached to the uh, spinal cord are the spinal nerves. Each spinal nerve has a posterior root and an anterior root. And these will roots will meet together at the intervertebral canal and will form a spinal nerve. And then the spinal nerve divides into a posterior ramus and an anterior ramus. The anterior root of the spinal nerve contains nerve fibers whose cell bodies are located in the anterior horn of the spinal cord. So these are called anterior horn cells, and these are motor efferent fibers. Their fibers will pass through the spinal anterior root of the spinal nerve, then through the spinal nerve, and they will be distributed through its rami, posterior ramus, and the uh, throughout the anterior ramus of the spinal nerve. These fibers are motor fibers. So they supply the uh, skeletal muscle. In addition to that, the spinal nerve contains sensory fibers. And these sensory fibers have their cell bodies in a ganglion, which is located in the posterior root or dorsal root. A ganglion is a collection of nerve cell bodies outside the central nervous system. So this is called the dorsal root ganglion and it contains cells, cell bodies of neurons which are pseudo-unipolar neurons. They have a central axon. I will draw them interrupted so they are sensory. They have a central axon and a peripheral axon. And this peripheral axon uh, will pass through the posterior root of the spinal nerve and then continues into the spinal nerve itself. So you can see that the spinal nerve here contains motor fibers and sensory fibers. It's a mixed nerve. And these, um, this is, will be distributed through the anterior uh, primary rami of the spinal nerve or the posterior ramus of the spinal nerve. And these are uh, going to be distributed to the skin and they are sensory. Um, they receive somatic sensations from the skin, um, including um, these pain, um, touch, uh, temperature, vibration. So we have here uh, uh, sensory fibers and motor fibers. The sensory fibers relay in the posterior horn and the motor fibers have their cell bodies in the anterior horn cells. These are, this is as far as the um, somatic nervous system is involved. Now, let's deal with the sympathetic nervous system. Again, I will draw it from the other side to compare. So, this is the posterior root of the spinal nerve, an anterior root of the spinal nerve, and this is the spinal nerve here, it's formed. Posterior root, again, is distended by a ganglion, dorsal root ganglion, and the spinal nerve with a posterior primary ramus and an anterior primary ramus. Now, the autonomic fibers, again, they are afferent and efferent fibers. Let's start dealing with the efferent fibers. These efferent fibers are 
uh, have their cell bodies located in the lateral horn of the spinal cord. Lateral horn of the spinal cord that contains these cell bodies. This lateral horn of the spinal cord is a feature of spinal cord segments T1 to T to L2. T1 to L2. And this region of the spinal cord is the outflow uh, region of the sympathetic nervous system. No sympathetic fibers arise from the spinal cord or the central nervous system above T1, and no sympathetic fibers arise from the spinal cord below L2 level. L2 spinal cord segment, not vertebral level, but L2 spinal cord segment level. Because these segments from T1 to L2, they have a lateral horn in their spinal cord, and um, um, the, the, this lateral horn contains the cell bodies of the efferent fibers. So these efferent fibers will accompany the uh, ventral root of the spinal nerve, and then will continue into the spinal nerve itself. Here we have to do something else for the pathway of these fibers. We have to add something else, and that is the sympathetic trunk. So the sympathetic trunk, it's a, a very long nerve trunk that extends from the base of the skull down to the coccyx in front of the sacrum on both sides of the vertebral column. And it's actually um, beaded by ganglia. For example, this is a ganglion here, sympathetic ganglion. Again, ganglia contain nerve cell bodies. So this is a ganglion here. There's another ganglion here. And another one below, and so on. These ganglia, uh, sometimes uh, they are almost the same as the number of the um, the spinal nerves, but usually they are less, especially in the cervical region. So in this, let's if this, you if we imagine that this is like it's a T1 level, we are at T1 level. So this is T1 uh, ganglia. Um, then the ganglion above is a cervical ganglion. It's an inferior cervical ganglion, and then we have a middle cervical ganglion and a very big one. Uh, superiorly, which is called the superior uh, cervical ganglia. So three cervical ganglia, although we have eight spinal nerves. But in the thoracic region, uh, for example, we have like 11 um, uh, thoracic spine, uh, sympathetic ganglia, although we, and we have 12 thoracic uh, spinal nerves. So it's not necessary that the number of the ganglia is similar to the number of this uh, spinal nerves. These ganglia, and now I'm talking in, in, in a region between T1 to L2, these ganglia are connected to the anterior primary ramus of a spinal nerve. So these are connections here. This is a connection. These are called rami communicans. Rami communicans. They connect between the um, spinal anterior primary ramus of the spinal nerve and the ganglion. So. Um, now, for example, here, this is the, um, the nerve, the efferent fiber from the lateral, whose cell body is located in the lateral horn of the spinal cord. The fiber will continue into the spinal nerve, and then it will reach the ganglion here and uh, to synapse in the cells of the ganglion. So uh, here it passes into a ramus communicans, um, this uh, ramus communicans that contains preganglionic fibers, preganglionic fibers, um, it's called the white ramus communicans, and within the ganglion, um, what happens is that the um, postganglionic fiber, this is the nerve cell of the postganglionic fiber, which is present in the ganglion, this postganglionic fiber has it, the axon of the postganglionic fiber will leave through another ramus communicans, through another ramus communicans, which is 
um, contain postganglionic fibers, and this is called the gray ramus communicans because these are unmyelinated nerve fibers, while the white rami communicans, the preganglionic fibers, are myelinated fibers. So here you can see that the efferent pathway here in the autonomic nervous system, in the sympathetic nervous system, it includes two neurons. The first neuron has its cell body in the lateral horn of the spinal cord, and the second, as we can see here, uh, as an example, it has its cell body in the, um, in the uh, ganglia, uh, in a sympathetic ganglia. And this sympathetic ganglion could be either part of the sympathetic trunk, and in this case, it is called paravertebral ganglion because it is located on either side of the spinal cord. You can, um, um, uh, of, the, of the vertebral column, you can imagine that the vertebral column is located here and it contains it, the spinal cord. So these are paravertebral um, sympathetic uh, ganglion. Now I have just talked about um, only one option of the fate of the preganglionic fibers. The first one is where the uh, preganglionic fiber synapses with a postganglionic neuron at the same level. Now, the second option is that the fiber it either ascends within the, within the sympathetic trunk, it ascends within the sympathetic trunk, and ascends with and, and uh, synapse with ganglia higher up. So here, this, for example, this is an ascending uh, preganglionic fiber that's going to synapse in the cervical ganglia and postganglionic fiber will uh, arise. And this can be understood because above T1 level, um, this is a cervical ganglion, above T1 level, we do not have a sympathetic outflow from the central nervous system. So this ganglion is not connected to cervical spinal nerves, to anterior premi of spinal nerves by white rami communicants. They are only connected by gray rami communicants, no white rami communicants, because there is no outflow. And the outflow that, and the preganglionic fibers should reach the ganglion from below. The same is true for the ganglia <coughs> or for regions that are below L2 level. So, um, in addition to fibers ascending up, fibers can descend down into the uh, sympathetic trunk and they synapse in ganglia that are located uh, um, downwards. Like for example here, let's imagine that we are in, this is, I will draw it as interrupted, indicating that it's a very long distance below. So for example, uh, this is, um, um, a sacral ganglia, let's say, and then uh, the, the sacral region. It's the same story like in the cervical region. The spinal nerves, they are not connected by white rami communicants. They are only connected by gray rami communicants, and the postganglionic fiber uh, will um, uh, be present uh, here, uh, receiving um, preganglionic fibers from higher up and not from the same level because in the sacral region or lower lumbar region, there is no outflow from the spinal uh, cord of sympathetic nerve fibers. So now we have uh, dealt with two options until now. Option number one, the preganglionic fiber, they synapse at the same level, uh, uh, ganglion, or the option number two, they ascend or descend within the sympathetic trunk. And the third option is that these fibers, the preganglionic fibers, will leave the sympathetic trunk, in fact, they leave the medial side of the sympathetic trunk without synapsing. Um, let's suppose um, that this is a sacral region, and this is, for example, like a level of uh, T6 region. And so the, the preganglionic fiber here will leave without synapse. Preganglionic fiber pass through the sympathetic trunk, leave the medial side of the sympathetic trunk without synapsing. Three options, again, preganglionic fiber synapse at the same level, preganglionic fiber ascend or descend to synapse at uh, 
upper or lower levels of the sympathetic trunk and the third option is the presynaptic fiber does not synapse in the sympathetic trunk and leave the sympathetic trunk without synapsing and these are called the uh, thoracic or abdominal pelvic sometimes called splanchnic nerves because they are concerned with the supply of the viscera that are located in the uh, abdomen.